Let's look at a case study. Adam has just been appointed as a supervisor in a data processing department. He had been in the department for five years before being promoted into management. His work in that job had consistently been of superior caliber. Well, except for a good-natured little kitty, and Adam's co-workers wished him well in his new position. And for the first week or two, most of them had been cooperative, even helpful, as Adam was adjusting to his new role. But then late one Friday afternoon of Adam's second week as supervisor, a disturbing incident took place. He had just made the rounds throughout his whole department, and he stopped by the lunchroom. There he saw two of his old buddies, Mick and Bobby. They were sitting at a table ready to go home for the day. Hey, fellows, you shouldn't be here this soon. It's at least another 15 minutes until quitting time, Adam said. Get back to the floor and I'll forget I saw you here. Come off it, Adam, said Mick. You used to slip up here yourself on Fridays. Just because you got a little rank now, don't think you can get tough with us. Adam replied, hey, things are different now. Both of you get back to the job or I'll make trouble. Mick and Bobby said nothing more. They both returned to the floor. But from that time on, Adam began to have problems as a supervisor. Mick and Bobby gave him the silent treatment. His employees seemed to forget how to do the simplest things. Every few minutes, there was a machine shut down. By the end of the month, Adam's department was showing its poorest record ever for production. So how might Adam handle this, this incident with his employees? If Adam's a dominator, he'll be aggressive. He'll let them know that he won't tolerate their poor performance. He might even become more vigilant and seek to find out who these people are that are causing problems and tell them that he's willing to fire somebody if things don't improve. If Adam's an accommodator, he'd likely withdraw, fret, worry about what's happening. He might even apologize to Mick and Bobby, which may not be a bad thing, but also take the blame for what's happening. He might bend over backwards to make his employees happy and possibly in the process undermine his own authority. If Adam's an avoider, he might minimize what's happening and hope that things will improve over time. He'd rationalize the decrease in production by telling himself that it's part of the natural transition to, in his supervision. Well, Adam is facing a moment of choice. Will he use one of the three styles of communication or will he move towards collaboration? The stakes are high because the decision that he makes will determine his relationship with his employees and potentially the productivity of his department. The next lecture is a model to help you understand the consequences of Adam's choice.